Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by. So a lot of people are a little stressed out right now financially regarding the gas situation. You know, prices are going up at the pump and it's got a lot of people understandably concerned because unfortunately we don't have the best infrastructure in the states when it comes to public transport even like bike lanes and stuff like that there's really poor infrastructure for pedestrian travel unless you're in a car so i decided to have a little bit of fun about it and mostly who i was making fun of was people who live in dense inner cities who still drive to work of if you're you know some you know like a spider-man meme of the you know tell me the truth i'm ready to hear it and rather than complain about gas prices you can walk ride a bike or take public transport now this uh led to some very interesting replies and comments but i think the most common one that i saw which i was kind of confused about but that's why i'm making this video there's two of them one of them was someone who said i hate the poor and hate working class people which i mean i am one <laughs> you know admittedly for me before i moved at the job that i'm at right now yeah it was it was an hour drive both ways you know i spent a lot of time on the road and it's actually the reason that I purchased a vehicle was strictly to get back and forth to work. I had no other reason to need a vehicle other than going to work. And unfortunately, I'm still paying that car off. I will be for a while because, yeah, I bought something brand new. I needed something reliable that would last me for a long time because we got to get to work. That's the only reason I need a car, you know. Frankly, for most of us, that's the main reason we have vehicles. You know, you can say you need it for grocery shopping and things like that, but, you know, frankly, if we had better infrastructure, you probably wouldn't need a personal vehicle to go grocery shopping. If you had the option for public transportation that would get you to and from, you know, within a relatively safe distance... I would, rather than doing like weekly, you know, bi-monthly type shopping trips or you buy a whole bunch to bring it home, I mean, personally, I would rather do like a daily shopping thing where like there's a corner store that I can go to, get my stuff for the day, and just call it that. I don't like having a lot of stuff in my house in the first place. I feel like stuff spoils faster when you buy it yourself. That's just a personal thing, but, you know... That is one thing that if we had proper infrastructure, grocery shopping probably wouldn't require such big vehicles. The reason we need vehicles to go grocery shopping is because we don't want to do it every day. And usually because the grocery store is pretty far from your house because that's how we've built our towns and cities. But the second one that I heard more than once was someone called me ableist. They said that I don't care about people who have disabilities because I'm suggesting that they walk to work or ride a bicycle to work when they might not be physically able to do that. Now, obviously, there are going to be people who physically cannot ride a bicycle, who physically cannot walk that much distance to get to their job site. I understand that. That's obviously not the people I was talking about. These people might be hurting on gas prices and things like that, but, you know, mainly the people who I would say should be riding bicycles are these people who live in, you know, denser cities where their drive isn't exactly very far with walking, you know, maybe like a 30 minute walk, bicycle, maybe 20, 15 minutes, you know, depending on how much you can weave in and out of traffic. Um, I'm not talking about people who live in very spread out rural environments who it would take them 
an hour and a half, two hours, one way to get to work. As much as I am willing to do that and have done it, you know, rode a bike an hour, one way to get to a job site, I understand that not everybody is physically capable of doing that. If you are, though, you should consider getting a bicycle. My main reason behind pushing for bicycles, even if you don't have proper infrastructure in your area, if enough people start doing something, there will be a response. If you have dozens of people every day taking up the road on their bicycles, your city and your town might think it's a good idea to install bike lanes. But if you refuse to ride a bicycle because there are no bike lanes, you kind of need to be a trendsetter in that regard. When I ride my bike to work, there are no bike lanes, there are no sidewalks. For me, I'm lucky because I have to go really early to work. So usually in the morning, I don't run into anybody. But when I'm coming home, yeah, there's cars on the road. I've been honked at a lot, you know, but I don't, I don't go off to the side. I'm going to stay right in the middle of that lane because yeah, it's going to be annoying for all the cars on the road. Oh, there's a bike who can only go 10 or 15 miles an hour. I can't get around him. He's taking up my space. We'll make a space for me then. If enough people actually start doing that, You'd be surprised at how your town or city might build some infrastructure for y'all. It's, you know, you can push for the infrastructure to get built first, but sometimes you got to leap out and, you know, hope that it gets built. And if it doesn't get built in your lifetime, that's fine. You know, hopefully the next people will be able to benefit from it. But, you know, it's an old Roman phrase that, Society is truly complete once men plant trees that they know they won't get the shade from. So, if you want your kids to feel some of that shade from this beneficial infrastructure, start working towards it. You'd be surprised at what happens. Y'all have a good day.